Rub up your engines! Okay, modern cars are getting pretty complex. There's a few things that if you don't know, you can get ripped off on repairs, or you're gonna have something done that doesn't even need to be done. I'm gonna show you these tips so you don't have to get ripped off, you can do stuff right, and your car will still run good without wasting money. Now, electronics on modern cars are getting more and more complex. As we look under this late model Toyota Tacoma, and this is a 2022 V6 Tacoma, you have to understand that batteries are a lot different than they used to be. You need a lot of power, strong, continuous, and safe, no voltage surges. So many car makers are now using absorbed glass matte batteries, and the computers in the vehicles themselves are counting how old the battery is. So when your battery does go bad, numero uno, if you came with an AGM battery, you want to replace it with an AGM battery. Don't save money and buy a cheap one, because it's made for that. But you also have to register it in your vehicle, because if you don't, the computer will think your battery's old. An old battery needs to be charged more. So it will overcharge the new battery, and I've seen in nine months, 12 months, year and a half, that expensive new battery go bad, because it wasn't registered. So if you do have a modern vehicle, and you have one of these AGM systems. You gotta make sure this is done. Just during the battery, and you're gonna see how it's done. On this hotel, it's very simple. You go to service, and you go to the battery management system. That functions. You reset it for a new battery. In this case, here it says, status successfully changed. You're gonna pay somebody to do it, because most machines, this is like, $500 machine, it works fine. You're probably not gonna buy the $500 machine, so you need to have somebody who has one reset your battery. Now, it takes months and months and months and months or a year or more for it to damage the battery. So let's say you're in the middle of nowhere. You can replace the battery and then whenever you get a chance, go to a mechanic and they can reset it as being a new battery like I did with this machine. You don't have to worry about it, but you got to do it because if you don't, you're going to find out, gee, my new battery, I paid a fortune for that AGM battery and it only lasted nine months or a year and a half because it would be overcharged. The computer doesn't reset itself. A computer like this to do it. Now, the second thing you need to know with modern cars is when you disconnect the battery that shuts down a lot of computer systems that have memorized things a lot of these toyotas you replace the battery and you just take it out put a new one in it'll start idling pour and stuff and it's got to reset things and on bmws and things sometimes the windows won't roll up right so you need one of these memory saver devices they're cheap and easy to use so when you disconnect the battery the power is still going to the computer system this way the memory saver plugs right into your data port just the obd port okay there we go it's plugged in then the other end goes positive to positive negative to negative to a 12 volt battery so i'm a mechanic so i got 12 volt batteries lying all over the place you can buy ones that have a battery supply already built in but take this advice some of them have a 9 volt battery that are supposed to keep the stuff alive you're better off using a 12 volt supply because that's what the system was designed for the 12 volts coming out of your OBD part, you better leaving it at 12. Some cars get a little funky. Just get one that either has a 12 volt battery in it or get one like I have that doesn't come with a battery. But instead it's got two clips, one for positive battery, one for negative. And then when you remove the battery, the car's still got power. So when you put it back on, when you're done tightening it up, you just go in the car and you unplug it and you won't lose all the memory. It's a little thing, but it's gonna keep you from having nightmare scenarios. Car might not run right, you lose your radio stations, all that stuff. It's so simple to just buy one of these cheap things from Amazon for eight or 10 bucks and go that route when you change the battery. Because if you don't, I've even seen some that it screws up the burglar alarm system somehow, taking it off, putting them on, and the burglar alarm won't shut off. And and then you gotta mess with the burglar alarm system. This way, you're bypassing all that garbage. Now the next thing I want you about modern cars is make sure the battery terminals are tight. As you drive around, engines vibrate, things can get loose. And over the years, even I have a few times screwed up, checked out the car, trying to figure out what's wrong, then I grab the terminal, it's fine, I grab the other ones, it's loose like this. It's wiggling. It looks okay, but when it's loose, all kinds of things can go wrong. All you need to do is get a wrench and tighten it up as tight as you can. Now it doesn't move. You might as well check the other side. And look, 
I guess don't tighten it, son. And you might think, what will that little loose thing do? It can do a lot. In the case of this car, hey, it said service charging system when I started it up. Now, if you take a vehicle to a mechanic and you said, gee, it said service charging system, they might try to sell you an alternator or whatever. You might just find the terminal got loose. So tighten them up. And in this case, since it was loose, the battery wasn't getting charged correctly. So I'm gonna charge it up. I'm using this battery tender. What you want is a smaller one, four amp, two amp. The longer the time, the better it is. You don't wanna do it too fast. And in this case, this does them all. They do AGM, they do flooded, and they do lithium. And in this case, it's AGM, so we just hook up. You wanna make sure they're not snug. See, it's doing its job. 12 volt, AGM flooded, charging when it's done it'll say fully charged now everybody's in a hurry these days no oh i'll put a 30 40 amp charger no you can ruin the battery especially an agm battery look most people sleep at night so hook this up at night you get up in the morning it should be done with its job and the advantage of a charger like this being a battery tender and charger when it's done it doesn't overcharge, it just sits there. If you have a vehicle you don't use much, you can leave this hooked up the whole time, all winter, like a boat or an ATV. And then in the summer, it'll start right up and the battery will have a much longer lifespan. Because batteries do not like being fully discharged for long periods of time, it destroys their lifespans. This is why if you buy most motorcycle batteries, they used to come with a 90 day warranty. Whoop de doo, right? Now some of them come with a year warranty. Still, that's a crappy warranty. But the reason they give such a crappy warranty on motorcycle batteries is guys don't drive them all that much. You drive your car every day, right? And even if it's not fully charged, it'll still start it up. But a motorcycle is gonna sit all winter. Some guys put a thousand miles on in four years. so. <laughs> the batteries always go bad and they don't want to give you a free one. So if you do have a motorcycle or an ATV, it behooves you to buy one of these and leave it hooked up all the time. It only uses pennies of electricity each month. When you see how much these batteries cost, you'll wish you'd bought one of these and put the tender on when you weren't using a thing. Now you may not realize it, but a lot of modern cars do not come with a spare tire anymore. Now yeah, how cheap can you get? So you really need to have one of these in your trunk. This particular one is a Yantu that I've been trying out. So far, it's worked pretty good. You want to be stuck in the middle of nowhere with a flat tire, no spare. Then guy's going to come. You're going to have to pay them. Then they'll try to take you to a garage. And of course, they'll tell you, well, we can't fix the tire. It's too far gone. We got to sell you a new one for a whole bunch of money, right? And if you got a four-wheel drive vehicle, they'll try to sell you four tires, right? Well, if you got one of these, you can pump it up and get wherever you want to go. And unlike other ones I tried out get to be a rocket science to push 18 buttons 16 different ways here we go oh complex here we push the button it is now turned on so this is the only thing I don't like about it you got to push this stupid button now it's PSI you can set the PSI you want we'd want like I don't know, 32 PSI then when you put it on the car all you have to do is push the start button it fills it up and it shuts it off when it's done. And when you're done, push the off button, it turns off. You don't have to sit there for half an hour wondering, is it off? With all these digital buttons, it's got a nice regular switch that goes on and off, not digital. Higher pressure, lower pressure. The only thing you gotta learn is that changes it from the different systems, bar, PSI, we all use PSI. Then you just push the button, it turns itself on, and then you push the stop with whenever you want, or it'll do auto stop when you have it the pressure that you set it for. And it might sound like a little thing, but in modern cars with no spare tires, and you're stranded somewhere, you're gonna wish you had bought one of these things. Those little lithium ion batteries in them are a lot stronger than you think. I have already filled up 14 tires with that thing truck tires car tires motorcycle tires bicycle tires right and it's still got over 90 percent of its charge left pretty good machine i gotta say something you wish you had you don't have a spare tire so don't wish you had a spare tire it's too late you don't have one right but if you got that and you got a problem with a flat you can fill it up and get somewhere and that's the name of the game you don't ever want to be stranded somewhere where you're at the mercy of whoever rolls up in a tow truck and decides to try to take you to his friend's place where he's a bird dog and he gets 20 percent of everything out the door that the guy sells to you be independent get yourself a nice little air compressor right 
it comes in handy. Then in the summer, you go to the beach, you can blow up all the kids' crap. You don't have to sit there going, <laughs> You can just hook that up and away it goes. Since it's cordless and lithium ion, you can do it on the beach. You don't have to carry all the stuff from the car to the beach. You can fill it up on the beach, then you can empty it on the beach, shake them and all the sand will stay on the beach, and then you can put them back in your car. So now you know a few more things about modern cars. Yeah, they're getting really complex, right? But you want to keep that complexity running. With these simple tips, you're going to thank me by not getting ripped off by guys that are gonna charge you for stuff that you don't even need when all you needed was to tighten the battery clamp. And believe it or not, I have had people come to me with problems. And they'll say, you know, it's kind of weird, but this problem started after this guy worked on my car, right? And then I go to the battery terminals and I grab them and they're loose. And I swear, the guy just loosened the battery cable. So, and how simple things they may be, but they can give you a big headache if you don't check them yourself first. Now you know how to. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.